thinking, okay, Daddy, joke's over. I always thought that happiness was having your pulse taken by my father. Even as kids, Judy and I could tell them anything. After 12 years of marriage, kiddo, not bad. Oh, I just thought of an old doctor's joke. The cardiac patient says, uh, will I be able to have sex, doctor? And the doctor says, yes, but only with your wife. I don't want you to get too, too excited. excited. Yeah, sexist joke. I'll be sure to tell that at my next women's group. Is that what you talk about? We talk about the expendability of husbands. Oh. Uh oh. What? My plane. TWA flight number seven from London to New York is now boarding at gate 14. I hate it already. It's going to be awful without you. Oh, come on. You called your own shots for 29 years. Mm, that was different. I wasn't a wife. You get brainwashed. Besides, you'll be busy with your assignments. A week in London, then I'm just a tourist. What's wrong with taking a vacation for yourself? Driving around France, all our old spots? Alone? I hope so. Maybe the shortest vacation in history. You can always write a travel article. Mm. I haven't written a travel article since I was 12. Dr. Lear, Sophie and Dave Elias from Hartford. You took care of my father. Oh, sure, sure. Remember, the night he died, you stayed with him all night in this hospital room. All night. That was quite a while ago. Uh, do you know my wife? How do you do? A pleasure. This is Lear. To me, your husband is a god. A god? Uh, this is it, Mushy. Uh, does a god fondle his wife's rear end in public? That's so no one will think you're a wife. The Times Paris Bureau will know where I am. He's finished, and he goes off to sleep. And I'm laying there, and I'm mad. What do you think should be happening, Julie? Well, I figure that if women are like it says in all the magazines, or, or having orgasms all over the place. Why shouldn't I? I'd like her to be satisfied. I'd like to feel as if I'm doing a good job. That's what it's like sometimes, a job. Do you ever tell Dan what you do like? Makes you excited? <sighs> well, he should know. How? Good sex starts with being able to talk to each other. That's a skill you can learn. What we'd like to do today is to give practicing doctors some concept of the techniques used in the treatment of sexual dysfunction. Certainly, we don't expect all of you to become sex therapists, but the need for doctors to be able to... That looks okay. It's going out to 200 teaching hospitals next week. Yes? Dr. Korber called. He stenciled your meeting in for tomorrow morning at 10. Hallelujah. And please sign those letters on your desk before you go to lunch. Thank you, Doris. I had two students ask me today if the psychiatry department was going to take your program away from you. I have Corber's word they won't. Corber's a tower of jello. He'll never stand up to them. First, they'll have nothing to do with you. Sex therapy, the dirty word. Now that your program's a runaway success, you everybody wants to... You sound just to... like Martha. Well... So everything's working out, Hal? And sex education will stay with me in public health. And sex therapy will move into the Department of Psychiatry under Dr. Gross. 
Well, fine. Uh, then I'll be reporting to both of you. Well, not exactly. I don't know what that means. I'm asking Dr. Martin to edit up. But this is my program. I created it from nothing. I built it. Nobody's questioning that, Hal. Or your credentials as a doctor, as a urologist. That's what gave the program credibility from the beginning. Then what's the problem? You're not a psychiatrist. If I were to name you the director of a program in that department, well, I have a revolution on my hands. You can see that, Hal. It's purely administrative. We could make you a associate, something like that. No, I think we should issue a statement. Have you told Martha? No. Why well, louse up her trip? Besides, I know what she'd say. Why don't you get out of there? Next three, please. Why don't you? Then do what? Start over, build a private practice in New York? Or? This is Lynn Galwell, my choreographer. My cousin, Dr. Lear. How do you do? Listen, I think I'll skip dinner for the night, if you don't mind. Why? Linda's holding a table for us across the street. No, I'm not hungry. I'll take a rain check. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Well, Pleasure meeting you. Night. Night. So what do you think? Warm night, Doctor. Better turn the air conditioning on. Yeah, I may do that, Fred. How's the back? Better. I'm doing those exercises. I bet it. Yes, operator, I'd like to speak to France, please. Area code 935. Sorry, sir, the circuits are busy. Try a little later. Thank you very much. Oh. Yes, yes, I know. It's against the law in France to work while you're eating. The call to your husband. I try it now? No, it's a little early. We'll try that later. Oh.
911. Can I help you? My name is Harold Lear. I live at 1020 Park Avenue. I'm having a heart attack. My doctor's name is Russell Grant. I'm too weak to find his number. Please call him and tell him to come right away. Sir, I can't call your doctor. This is strictly an emergency service. This is an emergency. I can transfer your call to the emergency operator. She'll be able to dispatch an ambulance. <laughs> Admitting information. Next of kin. Wife? She's out of the country. Children? A son in England and a daughter. And her name? Judy. Uh, phone number? I can't remember. We must inform someone. Better find my wife. If I die without telling her, she'll never forgive me. Allo, New York. J'ai Madame Lear ici. Mr. Knapp, go ahead. Martha? Barney, what is it? Well, it's that Hal is feeling a little... He had this little... Heart attack. It's nothing much. You're lying to me. No, I'm telling you. He's complaining because he can't play tennis tomorrow. I'm getting the next plane back. What hospital? Stuyvesant. I'll call. Stuyvesant Medical Center, maternity. Oh, no. My husband had a heart attack. Well, then he wouldn't be in maternity. I'll switch you to coronary care. Mild. Did you say mild? No, I said mild. Your husband has suffered a massive myocardial infarction. Is he dying? Is he in pain? He's resting comfortably, but it's too early to... Can I possibly speak to him? I don't know. Hold on. Hi, darling. How are you? Oh, Hal. I'm fine. I'll be home tomorrow. Well, if you've had him with those Latin lovers... <laughs> Glad to have you back. Thank you. Will you take them up? I'm going right to the hospital. Sure. Give the doctor my best. Thank you. Enough of this fooling around. Let's get married. The speechless. What does that mean? to see. Terror. 
Why? It's only been a month. So? I will go. A doctor? Free examination. Divorced with two children. My kids will love you. Living in the boondocks. Hartford, Connecticut. Anything but New York is the boondocks. Shush! What's so important about New York? Work. You can write anywhere. Theater, art, museums, people in the street, taxis, noise, Statue of Liberty, everything. Except me. Except you. Dr. Cooper, staff. Dr. Cooper, staff. Down. Damn dumb. I missed you. It'll be all right. It'll be just like it was. The next 36 hours are key. They say that we're just gonna have to wait. So. Come and sit down. Let's deal with what we can. I asked my doctor, Mo Silverman, who does the best cardiology in New York, mm. and he said, I do. Well, then? He doesn't work at this hospital, but he's given me some names, and I've whittled it down to two. Werner and Roberts. Both highly recommended. Judy can stay with you tonight, Martha. Yeah, Mark's great with the baby. I mean, they won't even miss me. <laughs> Or you can come home with us. No, thank you, really, all of you. I'd, I'd rather be by myself. First impression's important. Do I look like a doctor? A prosperous doctor from Hartford? Chief of staff? Yeah, I know I should have worn a damn blue suit. Stop it. Daddy. Mom. This is Hal. Oh, hello. Come in. Come in. This for you. Good evening. I hope Martha can cook like this. <laughs> you didn't ask first. I drink to a brave man. And now the best toast of all. The high delight. What high? Hal, you come with me. I want to show you something. You excuse me? Do you like him? You like him, that's what's important. I wasn't looking to get married, you know that. And 
You and Mom certainly never pushed me. So we did something right. <laughs> you brought home a fine man when you were ready. It's here somewhere. Oh, here it is. I saved it for when Martha brought home her intended. Read it. Malden, Massachusetts, September 14th, 1939, to whom it may concern. This is to certify that I have examined Martha Wyman, aged six and a half, and found her to have a ruptured hymen, probably due to falling off a chair. Oh, my God. Signed, Dr. Joshua Friedman. I told Dr. Friedman, write it out. I'll show it to the man she's going to marry. Thank you, Mrs. Wyman. You're a wonderful mother. That's why you have such a wonderful daughter. He's had a bad attack. No doubt of that. When the heart muscle's been damaged, certain enzymes are released in the blood. The larger the quantity, the greater the presumed damage. What's the normal count? Forty. And Hal's? Four hundred. It can settle down. Dr. Curtis, please call one. I have some questions. Can a damaged heart heal? I mean, good as new. Sure, better. Next. His family has a history of heart attacks on both sides. How important a factor is that? It's important. Chances of recurrence? There's no telling. But you must have some idea. I mean, there must be studies, surely. You reporters. What do you want to know all that for? Don't worry, I'll keep you informed. <clears throat> Could you tell me Dr. Harold Lear's condition, please? Just a moment, please. Critical but satisfactory. Thank you. Don't forget, it's an old house, but it has great possibilities. And, of course, nine bedrooms. Now, it's a little dark, but that makes it cozy. And it is on the water. You know, people just don't sell these lakeside houses. Just one bathroom? Well, you could always add another. <laughs> I'll go check the electricity. I love it. It speaks to us. Yes, it's saying get the hell out of no, here. No, no, no. You fill it with white wicker furniture and rag rugs. Hal, it'll be gorgeous. It will never be gorgeous. You. Oh, how we could sit out here and have dinners and watch the sunset. I'll learn to cook. Okay, Mushy, we'll make an offer. <laughs> I still can't believe we got it. You were absolutely brilliant. I made a low offer, she took it. That worries me. Uh, say, are you the folks buying the old Edwards house? Yeah. Yes. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Guess she told you about the leaky roof. Drove them crazy. Yes. Well, good luck. Gorgeous. Yes, I'd like to know Dr. Harold Lear's condition this morning. Just a moment. Fair? Did you say fair? You've had a shave. I feel terrific. What am I doing here? There must be some mistake. Oh, you think so, huh? Well, let's see. What? It's all How? right. How? It's what? all right. It's all right. 
Wow, have I had a heart attack. Doc Dr. Lear, what are you doing? Checking my electrocardiogram. <sighs> well, don't do that. You'll give me a heart attack. Oh, thank you. Isn't she terrific? I always thought a good nurse gives bills, you know, checks charts and things, but when you're lying here, you see a different room. They're your lifeline. They come and they touch you and they say, now, isn't that better? You know who are a pain? Yes, I do. The wise guy, young doctors. You wanted to see me? Yes, I'm only having low-grade discomfort. I don't think I need a shot. Maybe something mild or aspirin. You can have your pain medication. There's nothing else ordered. Good. You know what the game is. Don't make waves. Don't challenge the doctor's authority. Those x-rays were ordered. What are you trying to do, cause trouble? Uh, uh. You've got no right to call down the x-ray and talk to my people down there. That's the wrong room. Well, what if it was the right room? Is that any way Sorry. to talk to a cardiac patient? Any patient? What are they teaching you in medical school? Arrogance? This is a hospital room, 212 hard-earned bucks a day. The next time you come in here, you knock. I will not be treated like an idiot. Hal, don't get excited. Damn it! Bring me my sawed-off jeans. You realize the AMA could bring you up on charges for this outfit? Let them try. Man, those are some sandals, Dr. Lear. I've always thought so. Isn't the sun deck too far? Probably. Dr. Burroughs, please call 125 West. I'm discharging him on Sunday. Oh, wonderful. Let's go over the instructions. Low sodium diet, absolutely no smoking. Exercise, he can begin by walking a block or so every day. He should be able to start working part-time in three weeks. Full time in six weeks. Any questions? Yes. When can I start having wet dreams? I want to see him in my office a week from Monday. Why can't that jackass talk to me? That I'm sitting right here. Doesn't matter. My God, was I like that? Didn't you hear? You're going home. You're buying out the place. <laughs> Fruit's good for my husband. No salt. The lower cholesterol. I gotta watch it myself. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see the melons. He loves those. I think I'll take a couple. I'll get you another bag. This man is dead. How do you know? Get the oxygen on him. Keep working. Daddy, please don't die. Daddy, you promise me. Daddy, don't die. Don't. No, Daddy, please. yourself crazy. Uh, and him. I even watch him when he's sleeping. Yesterday, I actually held a mirror under his nose. He woke up and saw me and he said, what are you afraid of, crib death? Anyway, he's home, and that's good. Mm -hmm. And not so good mm -hmm. for you. He has to stop smoking, so I'm trying to. Proofs look pretty good. Yeah, pretty good piece. Running out a week from Sunday. Ah. Oh. But another assignment. Do you have any gum? Arthur, you're going to need some relief. You've got to keep working. I you know, I want to, but I can't. The mind has a, a mind of its own, it seems. All right, don't fight it, go with it. What does that mean? Well, you're a journalist. Put down what's happening, what you're thinking. Let it all spell out. I mean, live it all over again. Once is enough. All right, then. What he's saying. What he's saying. What he's saying is that when a doctor becomes a patient, his perceptions turn inside out. See? Now, that's good. That's very good. Who knows, I might want to use it in the magazine. You're a con artist. <laughs> but lovable.
couldn't sleep. Working? Notes. Walter says I ought to write down everything that's happening and how we feel about it. Good idea. You think so? Sometimes I could tape us. Yeah, well, why don't you put down, um, every doctor should spend at least one week a year in a hospital bed. That change a few things in a hurry. <laughs> yeah. I know about the bookshelf and the china soup tureen. I am trying to stop. I truly am trying. I know, Mushy, I know. You smell good smoking. Sexy. Thank you, Carl. I can use that. Where did you see him? He was just at the buffet table. It's a rough scene, Martha. You have to deal with a lot of anger. Why don't you come back to the women's group and get rid of some of it? Or pick up a little. What kind of a lousy remark is that? It was a joke, for Pete's sake. Anyway, we could use your input. A few of us freelancers want to set up a meeting with the paper. You know how the magazine section is on women's issues. Excuse me, I'm going to just go see if I can find help. Oh, there you are. Martha. Martha. Good evening, Mrs. Lear. Good evening, Fred. What's all the fuss about? So I smoked a cigarette. One? He must have been smoking all this time. No. Don't lie. It's just like my father. I won't smoke, Marshal. I know it could kill me. And all the time sneaking cigarettes until the day he died. I am not your father. You're a doctor. You should know better. All right. All right. So I smoke whatever, whenever. I pick up butts out of the gutter. That's sick. You should see a shrink. Maybe you're right. Maybe I should. Make a cup. Mm. You trying to give it up? Oh, yes. After 30 years, it's tough. Well, hypnosis can be effective. Some people, of course, resist suggestion. That's why I do a single treatment. It either works or it doesn't. Just put your head back. Now roll your eyes back. Way back. Empty your mind. Your eyelids are growing heavy. Very heavy. You're feeling sleepy. Sleepy. Say these words after me. Smoking is harmful to my body. Smoking is harmful to my body. I need my body to live. I need my body to live. I need my lungs to breathe. I need my lungs to breathe. 
Cigarette smoking is choking my lungs. Cigarette smoking is choking my lungs. Therefore, I will not smoke. Therefore, I will not smoke. Cigarette smoking is choking my lungs. Cigarette smoking is choking my lungs. Therefore, I will not smoke. Therefore, I will not smoke. Cigarette smoking is choking my lungs. Therefore, I will not smoke. Cigarette smoking is choking my lungs. I well, the doctor will be back in to see you. It won't be necessary. Can I give him a message? Yes, you lungs. can tell him. If I'd known, I would have sent my tape recorder over to listen to his tape recorder. Why do we see such a high percentage of cardiac patients who are impotent sexually when there is no physiological basis for it. The obvious reason we know is the fear that they may overexert themselves and die in the act. <laughs> but it goes beyond that. The cardiac no longer sees himself as the, as the hard driving money earner, the peacock, the swinger. Impotence starts here. And when we fail to deal with that because of our own hang-ups about sex, we are copping out as doctors. Oh. I'm thinking of adding an epilogue, ladies and gentlemen, after everything I said today. The professor here, making love to his wife six weeks after his heart attack, was absolutely scared out of his skull. Just imagine how scared she was. That never occurred to me. Says it's okay for you to come back to work? Yes. What does he say about those pains in your chest? Healing pains. Normal. Normal to get short of breath walking 20 yards? He's a cardiologist. What do you think? I think that anything that feels as bad can't be good. I think I should get a second opinion. Gift from one of my patients. Not Barney. <laughs> From Barney, I get opening night seats. Front row center, mind you. Uh, I asked Barney to call you because I want a totally independent opinion of my condition. All right. You've got rounds in your chest. Your liver is enlarged and tender. You're in heart failure. Heart failure? Your cardiogram is abnormal, but I uh, can't comment on it because I have no basis for comparison. Dr. Roberts didn't send you my records, I asked him to. No. If I were your patient, what would you advise? From what I've seen today, I'd put you on some digitalis and a mild diuretic for a couple of days and see how you felt. I'd like you to order the medication. Hey, where are my skates? If I keep feeling like this, why not? I still don't understand how Roberts could have missed it. I mean, any medical student with a stethoscope can hear fluid on the lungs. Well, it's possible they were dry when he listened. How come you're apologizing for him? I'm not, it's just... The old boy's hypocritic oath. Your feminist slip is showing. That's right. In that case, maybe I won't buy you one of these for Valentine's Day. Hmm. I'd have to grow into it. <laughs> or out of it. Take an average issue of the Sunday Magazine section. Only one out of five features was written by a woman. Very few are about women. And of those, almost none dealt with valid women's concerns. Well, now, that all depends on what you mean by valid. All right, Walter, you take me. I like clothes, I'm a pretty good cook, I run a household, but I'd hate to think my life is defined by quiche recipes and fashion notes from Paris. Well, now, Martha, you're not trying to tell me that you're typical. Is that supposed to be a compliment?
Can I help you? No. Hold no. it, Walter. I don't think we should be adversaries here. This meeting is not meant to be an attack on you or the paper. It's just to present a different point of view. Okay, okay. The women are still the caretakers, whether you like to think so or not. He's been doing everything he was supposed to. What could it be? Don't worry. At least he's in good hands now. Looks like angina. I think we better get an angiogram. What's that? Oh, some pictures, x-ray. Oh, come on, Mo, don't patronize her. They push a catheter up through the femoral artery into the heart, inject the dye, and x-ray the vascular system. But you just had a heart attack a few months ago. Isn't that dangerous? Smart. Smart. Not enough dye, you don't get good pictures. Too much, and the mortality rate of, what, 5%? Look, we're talking about Manhattan General, with maybe the best angiographer in the country. And what are his mortality rates? Mo, if you waited a while, the pain might go away. It won't. It'll get worse. Pretty soon, he won't be able to walk or leave the house. I think it's a mistake. But you're a doctor. You've got a right to make your own mistakes. You know a coronary. It counts. You deal with it. You hope the hell you survive it. The thing here is, I've got a choice. It's kind of like a guy on a battlefield set with the shells bursting all around. A person could get killed here. Hmm. Honey. It's a joke. So how come we're not laughing? Dr. Lear, I'm Dr. Stark, and I'll be doing the procedure. Hello, doctor. I've never seen any of this lying down before. You'll be getting some tranquilizer in a minute, but we can get started. You're looking for the femoral artery? Yes. The trocar going in? Mm-hmm. Oh, I felt the pressure. Good hit? Mm-hmm. on TV. I'll be damned. There's my heart. We're going to inject some dye now. You may feel a flush. Feeling it? Yeah. It's like I'm on fire inside. Uh, I'm having pain. Massive. Pain. Then I thought, is this it? What a dumb way to die. And then it got a little less and less, and like waves going out to sea. Then you won't believe this. That's when they got around to giving me the damn tranquilizer. <laughs> well, Mr. Michael Weir, come to the information counter in the main terminal, please. Mike! Oh, I was afraid I missed you. They said your plane got in early. It was pushing all the way. Can you stay a while? Well, I have to go back for my finals. Then I'm home for good. I decided to finish my doctorate here. Oh, Mike. You'll be so pleased. How is he? The coronary arteries are a disaster area. 
I can't even find one of them on the angiogram. The other two are like rusty pipes. Why don't they have something like Drano for people? Give them time, they will. Do they want to do a bypass? They have to. Tomorrow. They found an aneurysm, huge. Apparently, he's been walking around with a time bomb inside him. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Celebrating two openings. Two? I know about mine. Mm, and mine. Thursday night in Philadelphia. Oh, well, here's the good review. And Mom, right? Yes, Thank Daddy you. and Barney. Honey, Thank you're you. getting all this down. You know, Martha's keeping a record of the whole thing. Yeah, I bet there's a book in it. And you'll do the musical. <laughs> <laughs> the left leg was incised. A long piece of saphenous vein was isolated and removed. The chest was opened, the heart electrically fibrillated. With body temperature reduced, we opened the circumflex artery and anastomosed the vein. The heart was then replaced in its normal position. A left ventricular aneurysm was excluded from the remaining portion of the ventricle. The patient came off the heart lung machine without difficulty. The chest was closed in the usual fashion. room about 15 minutes. And? Well, he's all right. He's all right. It was one hell of a massive operation, of course. Oh, where's Barney? Oh, uh, that's right. Philadelphia. How's it going? What about Hal? He's okay. Okay. I mean, considering... Bell did a beautiful job. Oh, I told Barney I'd try to get down there one night. I could take the Metro Liner on Wednesday, and if Would I Would you forget about, about the Metro Liner and tell us about Hal? Well, I'm telling you. Oh, here's Dr. Bell now. Is he out of danger? Well, we're having some problem with his blood pressure. Oh, it's a little low, but... If uh, we can keep the pressure up through the night, then... I want to see him. Well, he won't be awake for some time. I'll wait. He's embarrassed for you to see him with all the tubes and the needles. Embarrassed? And... What's going on? Nothing. What are you hiding from Nobody's me? Nobody's hiding anything. Mo, I want to see him. All right. All right. He's dead. Oh, he's not he's dead. dead. Come here. Hal. Hal, your wife is here. She's worried about you. Give her a sign that you're all right, okay? Oh, my God. He winked at me. Now, didn't I tell you? Temperature is over 104, Dr. Lear. We're running cold water through the blanket. What day is it? It's Friday. 
You've been here six days. What happened? We don't know. Your blood pressure has been non-existent. We've been fighting for your life. How are you doing? We're winning. We're just working our way through college, lady. Huh? 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 Easy, just a kid. I can't wait to get to my own bed. Seems okay. Oh, wow, I don't believe it. After 13 years, we have a bed spread. Well, isn't that what you said you wanted for your birthday? Another birthday? When is it? I mean, when was it? Yesterday. Remember the nurses came in, sang happy birthday, and you said they were all off key? I did. Here's another present for you. Oh, Michael. This is fantastic. Well, you always enjoy sculpting, but you never had the time. Oh, now I've got plenty of time. I need a little boning up. <laughs> the clay D-O-E-S. That's funny looking. D-O is do. D-O-E is do. D-O-E-S is, what, a bunch of little deer? <laughs> You're not joking? The clay does harden unless kept moist. Oh, does? <laughs> Why didn't they say so? Okay, make us some tea. You could use the terrace as a studio in the summer. going to the lake this summer. Exactly what kind of things? My handwriting looks odd. And words, I can't get a fix on them. Well, things often happen after this surgery. Some air may get to the brain. But it's been weeks. Well, it takes time. Mo, I can't even find your office. <laughs> That's easy. You've had enough of me. Something's wrong with my mind. Well, we're all getting older. I don't want any of this damn double talk. I don't need to be jollied. I need him to listen. You want to try to explain it to me? Wait. OK. Is it like vertigo? No. No, vertigo is where you stand still and the world spins. And with me, the world stands still and I spin. You understand? Oh, I can see them turning off Mo and Bell. It's just too threatening for them to admit there's brain damage. Oh, I think I should have a neurological consultation. Maybe you should see a psychiatrist. You think I forget because I want to? No, Hal, that's not what I meant.
Yes, it's Mrs. Harold Lear. I need to talk to Dr. Silverman. Dr. Silverman's off tonight. Dr. Warren's covering. Would you put me through, please? Hello. Oh, Dr. Warren. My husband is a patient of Dr. Silverman's. He had cardiac surgery four months ago. He has a temperature of 105, and he's shaking with chills. What kind of cardiac surgery? Double bypass. Uh, what medication has he been taking? Please, he has 105. You'd better get him to the hospital. What hospital? Manhattan General. Now, you take him to emergency. They'll know what to do, and you call me in the morning. <coughs> no, no, no. No uh, hospital. No, we have to. Come on, we have to. I can't. I can't make it. What are we going to do? Aspirin. Aspirin. And to keep me warm. Uh. got to do something. you just got to. All right, I should run tests, but I'll take a chance. I'm starting on steroids, prednisone, 20 milligrams, QID for two weeks. And make sure you call me every morning. Let me know how he feels. Every day you're getting better. It's a miracle. I think we've turned a corner, Mushy. I can feel the strength coming back. I can feel all the juices starting to flow again. And I mean all the juices. Want to talk about that? I've got to tone up the arms. I knew I'd find a use for these medical books. I'm sure the publisher will be thrilled with that endorsement. I did a great new exercise yesterday. What was it? I can't remember. I'd like to do some word association. I'll show you a word. Give you the association, and then you repeat it back to me. Finger, hand, radiator, green, salt, pepper, rock, shoe. Now you tell me. Finger. Hand. Radiator. Hot. Uh, no. Uh, salt. Uh, pepper. 
rock. I'm sorry. I understand. It's been a tough couple of days and a lot of tests. Tomorrow again? No, I've got all I need. Your diagnosis of your problem is very accurate, Dr. Lear. You have organic brain damage. Is it, it reversible? Compensatory, but not reversible. That means that I can't work anymore. Not the way you used to. Do you want me to send the full report to any doctor? No, no, just send it to me. I'm in here. You can't imagine how spectacular the Mozart was. I'm so glad you made me go. What are you reading? The operating room notes of my bypass surgery. Uh, I asked for a copy. I had a second heart attack. Did you say that? No, but it must have happened immediately after in the recovery room. Makes you think so. Well, it had to be. It fits. I left the operating room with the normal blood pressure. All my life signs were stable. Now, Bell said I would be in ICU two days. I was in there for nine. I, I came out with a chunk of my brain dead and enough of my heart muscle gone that I, I never had a chance to get well. You're not surprised. You knew. Mo felt it was best not to upset you. I see. You put your heads together and decided what I should know. How? What possible good could it have done for you to know? What good? I've been living all this time under the wrong hypotheses. I have presumed that they found a terrible heart, and I was lucky to come off the table alive. Now I find out my heart wasn't so terrible. In six months, I should have been able to swim a mile, to jog, to, to, to work. And I was so close. I was there. But you had another attack. Why didn't he tell me that? The truth would have been easier. Now, don't get excited. It's not good for you. How do you know what's good for me? Is it good for me to take up these books and just move them? Help! Hal! No, this, this typewriter, is that what's going to kill me? Hal, stop it, please, now. Double talk. Double talk. That's all I get from him. He looks at my cardiogram and he says, stable. If I'm so stable, why do I feel good today and yesterday I couldn't even breathe? You know, just once, just once, I would like for him to say, I do not know. But what I get from him is, you're always trying to do too much. It, it's your fault, your fault, never there. All right. I know you're in a rage at your sickness, at the doctors, and I understand, Hal. I really do. If it were happening to me, I would we be We don't much need worse. to discuss it. Yes, we do. Because you don't take it out on them, you bring it home to me, and I don't know what to My do with it. My quarrel isn't with you. You're splendid. Don't splendid me. Just tell me what I'm to do. Well, yell back at me like you always I do. I can't. Don't you see? I... Because you're... I don't want to hurt you. I never want to hurt you. He started drawing his own blood, having it analyzed, keeping charts. It's the doctor in him trying to understand the fevers, the crazy ups and downs. Mo, fevers have to be caused by something. Maybe I should give him another workup. Schedule some appointments for Dr. Lear find out why, then, then you could stabilize it. Martha, and... this is a man with a heart muscle that's barely functioning. And any change, 
Food, heat, fluid, anything is enough to upset its balance. I understand that, but... Look, we're not going to keep them around for 10 years. But maybe we can hang on for a few months, even a year. Yes? All right, I'll be right in. Martha, I have an emergency. I'll call Hal later. Okay? Come give Grandpa a give hug. Grandpa give Grandpa a hug, dear. Give me the biggest old hug you can oh, give me, and then oh, we're gonna go fishing. We're fishing. We haven't caught anything yet, but I'm pretty sure we will. This is a kitty, cat, and meow. And this is the fellow with the great big eyes, an owl. The child is a genius. <laughs> And this is, uh, it's, uh, bah. Oh, bah. At this table, you won't believe this, my grandfather won in a craft game. I always believed it. He always told me he won in the poker game. Oh, that's right, table stakes. I have written a poem for Hal. Are you ready? Of course. He's got no choice. He's a captain. <laughs> Please don't dance upon the table. Not to say that you're not able, except that Martha might complain if you accidentally kick over the champagne. <laughs> so light the candles, bang the drums, let the celebration start. And please accept this accolade to your strong and tender heart. Oh, Annie. Oh, Annie, that is so nice. Oh, Annie. Oh, Annie. Oh, Annie. Oh, Annie. Oh, Annie. Oh, Annie. 
I'll come. Uh, are you sure? Because baby? I think, yeah, it might just be his teddy or his. Uh, Martha takes care of the baby. It's <laughs> Character, what's going on? Here? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's okay. It's okay. You know what we're going to do tomorrow? We're going to bake some cookies. What kind you want, huh? You want oatmeal? Sugar? Chocolate? Chocolate. <laughs> there, there, there. Grandma's here. I wish we'd had a baby. When we talked about it, it was never the right time. I know. I just... Michael's out sailing and your father's asleep. That was a pretty big night we had last night, you know. Hey, Karen, can you run away till we get these baked? Martha! Martha! Are you in failure? If, if I get any, any worse, call the rescue squad. What is it? Nothing. Thank you. Take him downstairs, Judy. I'll be fine. I'll be ready for your cookies. I'm gonna call Mo. You better increase your diuretics. Or shoot me. dishwasher for next summer. I'm tired of dishpan hands. Nag, nag, nag. Oh, we better get started for the airport. Where's the rest of the bags? No, I'm just taking my briefcase with my shaving gear. I'm bringing the rest when I drive down tomorrow. When you get to the airport, will you ask them to radio ahead for a wheelchair? Why not a stretcher? She's so pig-headed. He insists on going alone. I can manage. Call me when you get home. Stop worrying, my shield. Hey, Pardon me. Excuse me. Sorry. Could... Excuse me, are you going to the taxi I stand? Excuse me, sir. But I have a heart problem. And I can't carry this. Could you help me? What kind of heart problem? I have surgery, bypass. Have you got a scar? Yes, ma'am. You know, someone could be carrying a bomb. Yes. I really never thought of that. Martha, how's the weather up there? Mo, what is it? He's had a bad night. But he's feeling better. I took an x-ray this morning. It's not good, Martha. His heart's enlarged. Enlarged? There's deterioration there. One of his bypasses may be closed off. I'm being straight with you. All right. Last spring, you said months. He has almost no heart muscle, Martha. But you must have some idea of how long. You must have had other patients like him. No. No one as bad as he is who stayed alive this long. Welcome home.
what did Mo say? Oh, he said, take it easy. And? Honey, no shop talk, huh? This is our first night home together. I like those pajamas. Where did I get them? From Italy? No, Mexico City. Remember that little shop in the hotel? Well, someone called. <clears throat> I said you'd meet them. Uh, Who? Uh, oh. Where? Uh, Estelle? No. Barney? No, oh, someone. Linda? No. Judy? No. From the Times, Walter? No, damn it. Flo, my mother? That's it, your mother. She's arriving Wednesday on the four o'clock bus. And this is one of the best French restaurants in New York. We had to get Barney to make us the reservations. That's nice. Martha, isn't that food a little rich? Uh, maybe Mom would rather something else, Chinese. Chinese is nice. There's that terrific place uh, down in the village. Yes, that's right. Of course, if they make it too spicy, uh, Order for me, Marshal. You know what I like. All right. Uh, chicken matzo ball soup. One matzo ball is enough. And the corned beef sandwich. Uh, very lean. Or oh, would tongue be better? I guess a corned beef. Make that two, and I'll have coffee. What do you think? Should I have the turkey or scallops? Either one. I'll try the scallops. You want to know the truth? They're frozen. But the soul is nice. Okay, the soul. Didn't we have uh, soul last night? Last week. Anyway, I'm not too crazy about soul. Waiter, waiter, uh, could I change that to turkey, please? Why not? Are they going to bring me bread and butter? They usually do. I shouldn't eat it, though, should I? If I'm having a sandwich. Maybe I'd be better off with the soul. Honey, do you mind if I change my order Don't give again? give a damn what anyone orders. I can't escape. You can. Get away from me. Leave. No. Go somewhere. You should leave me. I would. I can't walk. I can accept that comment because I know it comes from a heart that is broken. 
But don't push it or you'll have a leg to match. <laughs> Quick, get another channel. Something sad. News. <laughs> That's too sad. <coughs> you sure you're not in failure? <coughs> no, I know when I'm in failure. <coughs> I've been there. <coughs> Martha, get off the case. <coughs> say about the wheezing coughing maybe a virus give him aspirin let's watch it i could write the dialogue myself wouldn't he be better off in the hospital yes but you heard him martha get off the case i'm so tired of being a nag sometimes i think i'd just like to fly away somewhere Look, I'm here. Fly. At least for a couple of hours. I mean it. Go, do something. This way now at two and three thousand. Three thousand dollars this way at three thousand. Three thousand five hundred. Three thousand five hundred on my right now for three thousand five hundred. For three thousand five hundred dollars on the right side, ladies bid, three thousand five hundred. Thank you. Next lot this evening is a very good example of Venetian glass. A very handsome chandelier, as you can see coming out here. What do you think for this piece? Handsome light, five hundred, five hundred dollars bid this way at five hundred. Five hundred and fifty. Five hundred and fifty this way, we're importing at five fifty, six hundred. Six hundred dollars this side of the room at six hundred and fifty. Six hundred and fifty on my right at six fifty, seven hundred. Seven hundred dollars we're importing on the left side now for seven hundred and fifty. Eight hundred. Eight fifty. Eight hundred and fifty this way. Nine hundred anywhere. Nine hundred. Nine hundred on the aisle here, thank you, ma'am, at nine hundred where I'm pointing. Nine hundred dollars on the aisle where I'm pointing on the right side for nine hundred dollars. Thank you, ma'am. The next lot we have this evening is certainly one of the more interesting ones. It's There's a carousel a horse that was saw many years of service at Asbury Park in New Jersey. Credit. What do you Why think to start it? A couple of hundred you? somewhere? Two hundred? Two hundred dollars bid. Thank you at two hundred. Two hundred dollars lot and fifty. Thank you, sir. Two hundred and fifty. Three hundred. Three hundred dollars lot and fifty. Three fifty. Four hundred. Four hundred dollars and fifty. Your turn. Four hundred and fifty. Five hundred. Five hundred dollars down and left at five hundred and fifty. Thank you. Five fifty. Six you like. Six hundred. Six hundred and fifty. Six hundred and fifty dollars. I'm pointing yes. on the right side at six hundred and fifty. Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Seven hundred dollars on the left side. Seven hundred and fifty. Thank you. Seven hundred and fifty. Seven hundred and fifty. We're on pointing. Eight hundred. Eight hundred dollars. Lot now. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Better get to the hospital. How much is 
Why don't you go home and get some rest? You've been here all day. I will, sir. Fill time. What's the blue one? That's my aphrodisiac. What's the temperature? Don't they call you? Sh shouldn't they be doing something? Martha, calm down. They have orders. He's in a hospital. He's being taken care of. <laughs> you should go on home. I'm staying. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to listen to your lungs again. Yeah. Breathe, please. Again, please. And again. His rounds are worse. Shouldn't he have more diuretics? No. Keeps him awake. Stop sneezing. If, if somebody could as just... As soon as they're free, they'll come. There are other sick people here. He needs to sleep. Can't he have something? When is Dr. Lear due for Valium? Well, not for another two hours. But he's desperate for sleep. Oh, who is it? Okay, give him whatever he wants. Keep my job. 
You're not feeling too well? Well, let's have a listen. Lean forward, please. They will. I'm going to stop all his medications till the doctor's seen the rounds at 8 o'clock. But that's over two hours from now. I'll call Dr. Silverman. I just called him. I'm going to start an IV on it. What for? To we'll establish a line if we need it. What does that mean? It means I'm dying. Listen to me. I'm dehydrated. Bare, barely any pulse. No urine. This is my fever spiked last night. My kidneys have stopped functioning. Tell them to hurry or I'll die. Yes, talk to you. Don't worry. I'll be here soon. Seven. Soon. Soon. Hang on, darling. I'm drowning. Hang on. Oh, try. <laughs> try. Come on. Sir, how are you doing? Would you wait outside? Thank you. 
What should I do? Just wait. They'll come for you. Mine too. He was waiting for a plane at Kennedy and just dropped. What did the doctor say? His um, aorta is ripped open. I don't even know what an aorta is. Crazy, isn't it? Don't lose hope. They're still working on him, but uh, it looks bad, Martha. Is he conscious? Mm hmm. I'll let you know as soon as you can go in. Martha. No. I want you to know they've made a truly heroic effort. Still be able to see him before. Martha, at least you're sure everyone did everything they could. No, they didn't. He knew what was happening. He begged, he pleaded, and they wouldn't listen. For eight hours, they wouldn't listen. And what was I doing? Watching the foul-ups, the institutional madness of it all, and accepting it. I should have run out of that hall and screamed and beat at them. Martha, don't. You were here with me. Did you know they have another waiting room with a television set in it? And I always wondered why. And now I think I know. One is for boredom and the other for despair. Martha, we've all known this was coming for three years. I know, and I should be ready. She's getting in touch with Michael. Good. What else can I do? <clears throat> Write an obituary. You want it in the Times? Do they have a picture? I don't, I don't know. Don't forget to mention his program. They took it away from him, but he created it. And I want everyone to know that. And, Barney, you'll give the eulogy at the... He'd like that. Is he gone? No, he's not gone. He's better. He wants to know every detail of the treatment. He's driving them all crazy in there. Better. It's incredible. That fight that keeps him alive. Incredible.
I've already made. Here's a direct number you call any time. Go home now. I, I just want to say goodbye to Mrs. Bailey. Well, she left her husband. chance why don't you quit and then inside of half an hour things started turning around you know i gotta say i was amazed it could switch again at any moment but uh... hello mrs lear it's bonnie at ccu dr lear says to bring oranges i will tell him i will i will Yeah, we're going again next month. And I was figuring on hitting a few of those three-star restaurants, and then she turns around and blows $350 in a suede belt. <laughs> Come off it. If you weren't so chintzy, we wouldn't be drinking this yucky wine. It happens to be a very good Cabernet. Anyway, what do you know about wines? As much as you know about suede belts. You know zip, sweetie. Drop dead, sweetie. Excuse me for just a minute. How about it? Anybody want more of this yucky wine to go along with the burnt chicken? Are you all right? I just can't stand watching you two do that to each other. Oh, why get mad at me? I'm mad at both of you. Don't you realize how lucky you are? With that creep, always putting me down. But drop dead? What if he did? You can talk. Hal's different. Why aren't you sleeping? Martha, what are you doing here? I just stopped by. Go to sleep. No, come in. Come here. About my dying. About your feelings, your fears. You want me to? Yes. Don't hoard them anymore. I am scared. I don't. I don't know how to go on without you. What would you do if I died? If you died? I'd have my time of mourning. You know, it would be hard, but I think what would help would be to stay involved with people, to work, to 
do the things I enjoy. Sail, make planters for the terrace. You'd stay in our apartment when we were together? Yes. I wouldn't run away from the memories of you. I, I want familiar things around. There's a picture of Martha Hung. There's the desk she worked at. This is the street where we walked. It would be the death of a part of me. But listen, Mushy, there would never be a question about my not surviving. Never. First you've all got to have the hot and sour soup. Yeah, and then the lake ton shrimp. You ordered the whole bloody dinner for him. <laughs> and he keeps wanting to know when he can go back up to the lake. Mo <laughs> says it's a remarkable recovery. Of course, tenuous. Are we talking about weeks? Of luck, months. Not necessarily. There is one hope. You mean a transplant? What does Mo think? I don't know. He hasn't called me since that night. Well, he knows you feel it wasn't handled well. There's a masterpiece of understatement. But that's beside the point. If we're serious, I think we have to ask Mo to explore the possibility with this man Shumway at Stanford. What do you think? Well, it's a big step. I don't really know enough about it. The past couple of years have been tough. They've also been some of the best times we've all had together. If he died tomorrow, I'd feel I understand him more than I ever did. And that'd be enough for you? No. I don't want to do nothing and just let him go. Then I think we have to talk to Mo. I'm discharging him on Monday. Wonderful. It's our 15th wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. I wanted to have private nurses for first week at least. I'll call the registry tomorrow. Uh, Mo. I know Michael spoke to you about the possibility of a transplant. After Hal is home and settled, can I come in and talk to you about it? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Do you know my blood pressure? Yes, it's stable, around 80 over 60. Do you know if I'm allergic to any medication? Hydralazine. Do you know my occupation? I know you're a doctor. What? He interviews him as if it was a, a cabinet appointment. Oh, that's because the one he tried yesterday said, oh, I see you've done your PP." -pee. <laughs> Thought he would explode. You'll do. Oh, Hal, they're beautiful. I wasn't sure you'd remember. Michael and I remember. To my mushy. Spend the next 15 with my love. Martha, you know how I feel. Yes, but despite that, we're hoping you'll use your personal influence with Shumway, and if Hal's age is the only deterrent, no, then I'd... It isn't. It isn't. 
The fact is the operation is so traumatic that only consider patients with absolute mental integrity. And since his surgery, well, as you know, Hal has not had that. His physical state is precarious, to say the least. And we don't know how much further tissue damage there's been and what caused this last attack. We don't. What do you mean by that? I mean, what about the stress of eight hours of low blood pressure and failure? Look, let's not exaggerate. I've been over the charts of that night and the signs weren't that bad. I don't give a damn what those charts say, Mo. I was there all night and I kept my own notes. Yes, I know I am an annoyance to you. Poking and prodding when I should be listening respectfully and nodding my head. That's nonsense. I never expected you to do that. But you're an amateur, playing doctor, grasping at straws. Look at these transplant studies. I mean, it's experimental work. The mortality rates are dismal. Look, you are asking me to argue vigorously for a procedure which I cannot recommend. Not even for your wife? Not for my wife, not for my children, not for anyone I care about. Will you at least present the case without bias? If you insist. Poor Mo. We both knew the doctors couldn't do the impossible. They couldn't make him well. In the end, there was no transplant. Maybe because I knew I could never uproot him to sit in a strange place and wait for a heart he might never get. Maybe it was a failure of my will, but I put my money on his. Instead, we went to the lake that summer, and he sat on the pier and watched other people sail his sunfish. Back in New York, he spent every day at his desk, paying bills, clipping from medical journals, scribbling very good, and save this in the margins. He reordered his personal stationery, a thousand sheets, and used dozens of them on letters to the editorial pages of the Times, to Con Ed, to Shell Oil. On a Wednesday afternoon, more than two years later, Hal came into my study. I don't know why you had to wake me unless my mother was calling. I didn't wake you. Hal, your mother's been dead for 15 years. No. 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 Thank you for getting here so fast. Please just wait here and I'll get him. He needed his socks. He needed his razor, his toothbrush, his eyeglasses, his pen, his notebook. They're here. Don't rush me. My pants. You don't need pants. You have your robe on. I want to wear pants. My lightweight jeans. Want a stretcher, sir? No. You want to go by ambulance, sir? No. What time is it? 2.35? Right down 2.35. Till subsided. Weakness. Irregular pulse. Where's my notebook? 
Is he conscious? Thank you, sir. Give him some response. Dr. Lear? Dr. Lear? Hal died at 9.30 a.m. 18 hours after an arrest, a heart like his had no business surviving more than minutes. I'll never give up, he told me long ago. And the sweet son of a bitch never did. Picking up a book manuscript? Yes. How do you go back? Bus, sometimes subway. Do me a favor, take a cab. First class, right on. I sold you your house in the country, remember? I've been going past your house almost every day for months, and I noticed you aren't using it. No, I haven't been there. Would you consider selling it? I have an interested buyer. I, I don't know. I'm, I haven't thought about it. Well, why don't you mull it over? You can let me know.
Drink up, you're behind a few. Bob and Annie, Chet and Helen. Thank you. 